This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar showcasing the new features in the 2019 release of Adobe Media Software. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you the new selective color effects in Premiere Pro CC. And one of the key new features is improved color grading. Now, what Adobe has done is they've changed the way that we can do secondary color correction. Secondary color correction means that we're changing a piece of the frame, but we're not changing the entire frame. And they've done it in the Lumetri color panel here by adding hue saturation curves. Now these are the new curves. It maps hue to saturation, hue to hue, hue to luma, luma to saturation, and saturation to saturation. And I can see already you're looking at this and saying this makes absolutely no sense. So let me give you an example. Here we have a beautiful farm field filled with lovely yellow green grass. I select the clip, I go to hue versus hue and click the eyedropper. And I now click the color that I want to modify. I'm going to change the color of this green grass and make it look like we're looking at a wheat field. It now sets up boundaries. This represents the range of colors that I clicked on. Grab the center dot and just simply drag up. And I've now changed that. Oops, centered up a little bit better. There we go. I've now changed that green grass to wheat. This is before, and this is after. Is that not cool? Now, this is still video. The wheat still moves, but we've changed it, which I think is just, just a lovely addition to being able to manipulate. Now, clearly, for some things like documentaries, you wouldn't want to do this, but for commercials, you can now have perfectly colored grass, perfectly colored sky, except my sky is kind of bland. Let's go back to this clip, make sure it's selected. This time I'm going to change hue versus saturation. Click the eyedropper tool. That's how you sample the color. Let's click a piece of blue sky right about there. Notice it selects the blue. And let's just raise the saturation for that blue sky. We'll make a big peak of it here right about there because I'm going to have the sky be bluer. If I turn it off, it's not I mean, there's not a whole lot of blue there, to be quite truthful, but that which <laughs> the blue that is there is bluer. And again, we take the grass and we've made it wheat colored. The cool thing about this is that we're manipulating pieces of the frame, which is why it's called a secondary color correction, like changing one color for another or changing the saturation of a specific color. Well, here's another one that just blows me away. This is almost a really lovely shot, except it's kind of cloudy and the foreground is dark and the background is a little bit too light. Wouldn't it be cool if I could pull that background down? Well, I could sort of put a mask over here and, and try and way too hard. Watch this. I'm going to take Hue versus Luma. Select the clip. Got to do that first. Click the eyedropper tool. That's how you select a color. Click on the color you want to reduce, which is that really bright brown back there, and just pull the luma down. Holy smokes. Look at that. This is before, and this is after. Is that not amazing? I took a photograph that was kind of marginal and made it now perfectly acceptable. These selective color controls give us far more control over pieces of an image without having to, to worry about creating masks first. For instance, here, let's say that I want to just make her lipstick a little bit more saturated. Select the woman. So we're going to do hue, saturation. Hue, saturation. It's at the top. I keep forgetting. Click the eyedropper tool. Select her lipstick. And just push the saturation up a little bit. Cool. Now we can, of course, apply masks. If I wanted the saturation to just be her lipstick, I'm picking up a little bit of saturation on her shirt. I could drop in a mask here and, and mask that. But what I'm trying to do is to show how we can pick specific colors easily and manipulate them in ways that we've never been easily able to do before. By the way, if you want to get rid of this, just double click any of the keyframes to reset. Scroll down again 
double click any of the keyframes and it goes back to square one but that's just so cool I can't not fix it so I'll do that this has been an excerpt of a recent power up webinar showcasing the new features in Adobe's media software for the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 265. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.